Welcome to News Desk on SiliconANGLE TV for Thursday, November 1st, 2012. I'm Kristen Folletti. Mega Upload founder Kim.com is planning a comeback, but will the Department of Justice stop him in his tracks? Join us now with breaking analysis on Kim.com's future in file sharing is SiliconANGLE contributing editor John Casaretto. Welcome, John. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Mega Upload founder Kim.com could violate the terms of his bail or face new criminal charges if he launches a new file sharing and storage service as planned, the U.S. Department of Justice said in a court filing last week. John, we've spoke about the Kim.com charges pl previously on our program. Remind us what the Department of Justice has accused Kim.com of. Well, Kristen, we're, we're coming up on about a year now since... Uh, the Department of Justice that cracked down on um, the mega upload operation and arrested the owners and uh, um, had an indictment against them. Uh, basically, the charges were for uh, running an organization dedicated to copyright infringement. So a lot of the illegal file sharing and things like that were the, were the kind of things that they were trying to crack down on. Dotcom made claims in early October that he plans to launch a service called Mega. Can you tell us about this new service? Uh, what makes Mega different from Mega Upload? Yeah, it, it's uh, definitely different. The uh, service works um, in a way that uh, um, previously you had to install Mega Manager on every computer that you ran Mega Upload from. This is a cloud-based service, so all the data is actually stored in the cloud. Um, they have a support for encryption. Uh, cross account or, uh, cross account folder sharing. Um, so basically, the users themselves have, have got um, a degree of an anonymity and a degree of uh, ability to share files without actually having the files in their hands. And uh, it's also designed in such a way that none of the servers at all are, are here in the U.S. In a January affidavit given in New Zealand, .com said he has no plans to relaunch Mega Upload or a similar service until the DOJ's case against him is resolved. The defense counsel claims that .com's new plans to launch his Mega service undermine the sworn statements he gave stating that he has no plans or ability to continue to operate or fund the businesses in the indictment during pendency of the extradition process. The question the DOJ is now asking is whether or not Kim.com intentionally misled the court in New Zealand about his intentions and capabilities in order to obtain his release from pre-extradition confinement. What's your take on all of this? Do you think Kim.com planned to rebuild all along? It definitely appears so. He wasted little time in announcing his intention once he was basically released. Um, if he didn't have a plan originally at that point, it didn't take him long to make one. And I think that really the impression is, is the biggest thing here. Um, it, it really looks like, you know, he, he, it didn't take him long to put together the, uh, the business partners, the, the service partners, and so on, and, and the funding to, to really put this thing together as quickly as he has. So it, it, it's fascinating, um, and, and that's a great question. And I think that, again, uh, how that looks to, you know, the, the people that are trying to prosecute him and, and come after him in, in a legal way, um, it, it appears that he definitely has uh, not really kept to his word on that. Or that was never his intention in the first place. With all of the controversy surrounding Kim.com's previous practice, why is he so determined to relaunch a site that could potentially get him into the same kind of legal mess? Well, that's a great question. Uh, you know, it was obviously a very profitable business for Kim.com. Uh, he, you know, he's convinced that um, by avoiding the U.S., uh, avoiding U.S. hosters, the, the domain, the people that run the domains, the backbone providers, um, with the secured nature, the cloudified nature of the new service, he can avoid all that trouble that he had previously. So, in other words, he made a mistake. He's staying away from the U.S. side of things. And he feels he can just avoid that trouble altogether this time around. Kim.com has confirmed the launch date for Mega is January 19th, 2013. What dangers does Kim.com face if he follows through with the launch of his new service? Well, it definitely appears that uh, he's, he's uh, dangerously close to violating terms of his bail. Um, or he could be facing new criminal charges. Uh, the assurances that he gave, it, it definitely uh, appears that he's going back on, on those assurances um, and uh, depending on, on how they take it and whether they wish to pursue it, um, you know, it really depends. It, it's going to be very interesting to see 
um, you know, what, what dangers he actually manifests in terms of, you know, actual charges and things like that in, in the near future. Ira Rothkin, a lawyer representing .com and Mega Upload, says it sounds like the United States is attacking a technology before they fully investigate it. This looks to be the second time they're doing that. Kim.com is innocent and he's entitled to be involved in technology and business. What do you make of Rothkin's statement? Well, he sounds like a great lawyer. I, I think that's the uh, other uh, piece of the foundation. Uh, what makes uh, Kim.com so confident in, in the, the actions that he's taken, the things that he said, um, is that he's armed himself with a great army and, uh, you know, a great uh, lineup of uh, legal people that are giving him advice um, and, and apparently are very aware of the, the various complex and um, sometimes, you know, uh, the gaps in, in law that uh, he's facing. So um, I think it, the statement really indicates more that, um, that the lawyer himself is, is really uh, uh, has a lot of things in his pocket and a lot of things that he's looking at in terms of, you know, that they're confident that dot com can run with this business and pretty much stay out of legal trouble. Do you think Kim dot com's new venture has the probability for success? Yeah, absolutely. He had a number of, uh, you know, uh, popularity uh, in terms of uh, users. He had many users on, on the servers previously. Um, I think that, uh, you know, a lot of people will be interested uh, first off. I mean, there, there's a lot of other providers and services that tried to fill the gap and, and a few things like that. But I think that what we'll see is, uh, um, you know, a good degree of success uh, initially. And, uh, you know, as it continues with the, with the encryption and the security, I think that a lot of people will be attracted to, to using that service in, in a new way. Let's not forget about Mega Upload's previous users. Right now, federal prosecutors are proposing a process that would make it essentially impossible for former Mega Upload users to recover their data following the government seizure. One Ohio man is actively pursuing a court battle to retrieve data, data he lost in the Mega Upload mix-up. John, it seems like some users are victims here. Do you think the respective owners of the data will have a shot at recovering what they lost? Uh, it's not likely at least not until it's all over. I, I don't see that as being um, something that's going to be a likelihood for them to recover that data. I mean, <clears throat> it could be taken as a sign that, that they were wrong all along. Um, I, I don't see them firing up those servers and, and giving people their data back. I mean, unless they're, you know, looking at, uh, you know, looking through hundreds and thousands of accounts and trying to find, you know, some of the materials that, uh, you know, they feel that, like they want to find in there and uh, they feel is illegal. Um, I, I just don't see that happening. Now, should the government fear legal uh, retaliation from some of those users who have lost data? I think that there will be some, some threats and, and a few things like that. Um, but, uh, you know, again, I, I think that uh, they'll be very, very adept at, at, at taking those things down or just kind of inaction until it's really not as relevant. Um, you know, who knows what the future holds, but uh, I think that with, with uh, you know, some, some legal actions, you know, there could be some, some uh, it's a long, long road, and it could be a long time before anybody sees any type of movement there. Kim.com is being tried in New Zealand. How do you think this would be handled uh, if he were being tried in the U.S.? Uh, well, uh, you know, there, there, there are a number of uh, indictments here uh, from the U.S., um, so... I think that, um, you know, in terms of handling, I, I'm not so sure he would have uh, been released on, on any type of agreement, for one. Um, you know, it's a bit of speculation, but uh, I think that perhaps uh, we might be looking at a little more aggressive, uh, you know, evaluation of what his activities were and a little deeper investigation of some of his connections and things like that. And I think it's very telling that Kim.com is, uh, focused on avoiding the U.S. altogether um, in terms of, you know, where his servers are running, um, you know, where the services exist and, and so on and so forth um, in terms of the domain and, the, uh, you know, the networks and the backbones, just avoiding that all. He feels like he can avoid trouble. And, uh, and I think that, you know, he's right. And I think that's going to be his biggest threat to, to his operation long term. As people increasingly store documents in the cloud, do they need to worry about the government's role of protecting intellectual property, which allows them the ability to seize servers and domain names first and worry about the consequences later? Well, I think that governments are starting to become a little more um, 
active in terms of you know uh, securing some of the the digital rights and some of the uh, copyright laws and things like that. So there is a degree of worry, a heightened worry in terms of you know what the governments are doing with uh, in terms of uh, securing intellectual property and so on. So yeah, uh, that that's on the uptick and it'll probably continue to increase and. You know, it's up to, uh, you know, the private um, sector to really kind of fight back on those things. Um, and, and that's just going to be an ongoing struggle. Well, John, thanks so much for your time today. We appreciate you joining us. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. For all the latest in-depth coverage and breaking analysis on tech innovation, keep up to date with Newsdesk on SiliconANGLE TV.